It's official, and um, <clears throat> I know I said this previously, but I actually mean it today. I'm not working any more day shifts at this facility, ever again. It doesn't matter how tough of a predicament they're in. I got told that I was going to be put on a particular assignment, and I come in, and I have the off-going nurse telling me, no, you don't, you're not going to be down that hallway. This other girl works that hallway. I, and I specifically told this young lady, <clears throat> and the text message from the DON says that I'm supposed to be down 500 Hall. And that was the understanding that I was given when I agreed to work today. Yeah, but so, but what's her face works that up, works that hallway. So you'll be down 400. All right. Unbelievable. And I found out why. I found out why. I found out why after I got report. I was just like, okay, you know, I'm familiar with the people on 400, whatever. I'll just make do. Well, then she lets me count. The, she lets me count these narcotics and take responsibility for this cart, and then she drops it in my lap. Oh, by the way, you have an admission coming down this hallway at some point today. That's why she pulled this little bait and switch because the girl coming in that she wanted on the other hallway so bad on 500 Hall is her little friend. And she didn't want her to be stuck with an admission. To say the least, I am a little pissed. This is one of the things about nursing that I was saying that it, it being a mean girls club that people do this shit to people simply because they, well, I don't know you and my friend's coming in, so I don't want her to have to do no fucking work today. So I'm going to dump it on you just because I can. That stuff works my nerves. 
So I'm fixing to get in here and try to get started, but I needed to come out here for a minute and just take a breath because I'm a little, I'm a little pissed, if you can't tell. Hey gang, so um, I had me a conversation with the DON about the situation with the scheduling and the fact that I have an admission that's being, that's been dumped in my lap and uh, she told me that she would take care of all of that, that that whole switch up of um, assignment should never have happened and that she's going to take care of that admission because that should have never been on me to handle anyway, um, especially, her words, since I was coming in to um, help them, otherwise she would have been pushing that med cart today. Um, and I'm really glad that she was receptive to what I had to say because, um, you know, this is not the first time I've heard of this happening where people finagle, have finagled the assignments um, when their buddy is relieving them or, you know, they come in thinking that they're going to have a particular cart even though the DON, assign, the DON assigns the cart and not the agency staff. Um, so, um, I, my, my position on it is still the same. The likelihood at this point that I will come back in here for a day shift is pretty well cemented that it's not going to happen anymore. Um, it would sincerely take them saying, if you come in, we'll give you bonus or whatever like that to actually even get me to consider it. Um, because, I mean, even with the workload on the, the more long-term care end, which is where I usually end up when I work night shift, being heavier, it's still, there's still less complications. I don't have to worry about people going to appointments. I don't have to worry about people being all over the building, people um, having admissions come in in the middle of things, you know, all of that. I don't want to have to with that. That's part of why I am not a day shift person. Um, so, I call myself trying to help and uh, it's bit me and um, from here, here henceforth I'll be tending to my wounds and um, learning my lesson. Um, I uh, took me a quick moment to go grab me um, some coffee and a soda so that I could you know, sit down and do all my paperwork and everything and try to get myself ahead of the game for later on because I've got people who have to have stuff before they go to get in the shower and I have to have stuff before people go to therapy and, you know, all this other stuff. So, um, yeah, I want to try to go ahead and get ahead of things and this technically is my break. So, talking to you guys is it. So I'm fixing to head back in here. I'm going to ride out the rest of this day. Praise Jesus, I still have eight hours left. Um, so we're going to get through this. Um, Nikki called me a little while ago and said that she wants to come over and have dinner and watch a movie. Um, so we'll probably have some stuff from that to show you to upload to because I told you guys Nikki's not bothered by the camera she'll actually probably tell you hi um so we're gonna see how it goes hey gang so um I'm home I got home late um my relief was like 45 minutes late showing up um I am ridiculously tired. <laughs> I have probably sounded like a whiny bitch from all the stuff today, but uh, I've just, <coughs> you know, I love what I do. I love my job. I love helping people. It's not the patients for the most part that are ever the issue in nursing or in the medical field at all. It's your coworkers. It's the people that you are forced to deal with that make it so complicated more complicated than it should be i said it when i was talking about the discussion with nikki on the phone i mean this is supposed to be a team sport um where everybody's supposed to work together to meet 
you know, the common goal of making sure that all of your patients are alive at the end of your day, you know, but by the time it's all said and done, it ends up being solo play where everybody's doing what they can to, to make things as complicated as humanly possible for everybody around them. And I don't understand that. I have never been that type. Um, but the rest of my day, you know, the high point for me was there's a gentleman on my hallway that, um, I, um, he was asking me what I, what I did yesterday. And I told him I made cookies and he said, Oh yeah, you made cookies. What kind of cookies? He's like, did you bring any? And I'm like, yeah, I actually did. I was like, are you a fan of coconut? He said, Oh, I love coconut. And I brought it in there to him and he took one look at it and he said, Oh my God, that's beautiful. He said, I'm going to have to put my mouth around that thing. He said, you can leave it with me. And, and he come back to me later to, um, get some, um, pain medication. And he said, Oh my God, I got to tell you that cookie was out of this world. He said, you will not ever find anything like that in the store. He says, mm. he said, anytime you want to make them just for the sole purpose of making them he said you make sure you bring me some and and I kind of laughed about it and I said thank you I was like that's nice to know that you know that they were they turned out good he said you know I really wish I could do something for you you are always so nice to me he says even when I'm a little bit of an asshole <laughs> and it tickled me you know because, you know, it doesn't matter how old we get, you know, we have our days where we are just cantankerous, you know, um, and I, I kind of laughed and I told him, I said, you know, well, I said, I'm just treating you the way I would want you to treat me. That's all. And, um, he said, man, he says, I've acted like, I've acted like a total ass to you before. He says, and the fact that even when you told me about myself, you did it in such a nice way, I couldn't be angry at you anymore. He said, so, he said, I've got nothing but respect for you now. He says, I know that if anything ever happened to me, you would, you would take care of me. And it's conversations like that and interactions that come through without any sort of prompting that salvages a shit day like today was, you know? Um, and no matter how shit my day may be, um, I will probably always be in a, a position of service to the people around me in some way, you know, um, it makes me think a lot about my mom because I've had so many people tell me, you know, your mom, she had a servant's heart be in, in the same, the same conversation, people will tell me, you are, you remind me so much of your mom. You are just like your mom. You know, you have, you are just a taller, younger version of her. And that gives me a lot of hope about the kind of life that that I have ahead of me because, you know, I, I can't remember the exact words, but Einstein said that there is no greater gift. There is no greater life. Sorry. There is no greater life than one lived in the service of their neighbors. And I feel like I agree with that. So I had to, I had to share that. So you guys, I hope every one of you all who won the, the giveaway, I hope you were excited. I'm excited for you. I've got everything all posted and uploaded. I'm hoping that I hear from all of you before the weekend is out so that I can, um, be bought Monday to the post office and get all that stuff out in the mail for you all. Um, I appreciate every single one of you.
and I just want you to know that. I hope you have a wonderful night. I'm fixing to go find a pillow and a blanket and get horizontal. I will catch up with you guys tomorrow. Bye, y'all.